Hey, welcome back to the Improvement Channel. I'm here with Richard Day, and we are going to be doing a project together. I'm real excited. He's letting me come up here. He's with 42 Fab. So, Richard, tell us what we're doing. Today, we're going to be building the sign. Figured we'd just come up here and find something to do. This jumped out. You got a cool logo. I think we can make something good for it. Let's just jump into it, man. Awesome. Let's do it. So Richard hands me the grinder and says, okay, hit it, go clockwise with it. Why clockwise? So the, the, the reason we go clockwise is the disc is rotating that way, right? Okay. And what we're trying to do is knock the dross off. It's, not, it's only really attached right at the edge. Mm -hmm. So if you approach it clockwise with the grinder tipped a little bit like you were, you're going to impact that dross in a way that it flicks off the piece. That's if you come in this way, you're trying to drag it onto the piece, but it's only attached at the edge, so you want to flick it away. Richard shared with me off camera, anytime he's doing a small project like mine, he goes ahead and fills out the rest of the sheet with uh, other things that he sells online. You can look at his website at 42fab.com in the description. Check out all these fine products and more. Put studs on the back of here in order to mount them to the plate. We've got the stud welder. We've got the TWI 321 from True Weld set up for number 10 studs. Boom. I'll show you with the first one and then you're taking over. All right. Come on. Yeah. So you go in, you press down, and then you just pull the trigger. There we go. That's those ones. Then we're just gonna do the hammer and the wrench. Right, so, it's just... um, so why is it you don't want to lay it on the table? Because uh, you want the ground to go right back out the pad of that C-clamp right there. Because if it's on the table, it could like spark to the table or arc to the table, and then you get a little blemish on the face of it. And 
this will show us exactly where all these pieces go and we get ready to drill our holes in the background to mount them. So the studs themselves are all exactly the same height, which is nice. What we're going to do is take a paint pen and get a nice glob of paint on the end of each stud. And then when we put it down in place, it'll leave us a mark on the background. We went ahead and drilled out all of our marks with the drill. And if you'll remember, we put spacer nuts on all of those studs that we attached. And now we are taking screws and running into the other side of those spacer nuts and attaching the logos. And here it is. Now that we know all the logos fit perfectly, it's time to go ahead and pull all of the screws back out so we can go ahead and start cleaning and prepping for paint. Richard, as you can see here, is working as fast as he can to beat me, even though he's giving me probably the worst screwdriver in the shop. Dude, man versus machine, you just lost. Okay, so we want to get a little bit more space on the hammer, so what we're going to do is take off our coupler nut, thread on one regular nut, and then put the coupler nut back again on top. And that'll just stand us off, what, like a skinny eighth? An eighth? Something right about there. Yeah, I like it. All right, we'll do that. Here I am putting those small nuts on there. And again, like Richard just explained, what that's going to do is it's going to pull that spacer nut off of that hammer a little bit further. And it's going to allow it to sit over the wrench without really touching it. So we're giving this a quick rub down with some acetone to get all the oil and water off of it. And then uh, here we go with some primer. Um, I'm going to put a lighter coat down. Richard's uh, more accustomed to a thicker coat. I guess most everything he does is laying vertical, and I'm not used to that. I've tried to avoid runs. So uh, he's throwing down a lot heavier coat, which is working great. Uh, getting the other side here. And uh, as soon as this dries under this heater, we'll go ahead and start sanding. Here I am with a 220 grit sanding sponge, just knocking the high spots off so that we'll be ready for paint. Can you turn the fan off or you good? No, it'll actually help. The only thing that's really important with metallic paints is that you come at it from the same direction for the whole coat. Okay. You know, if I moved and yeah. started doing this, You'd set up a different pattern. I'm painting the letters on the logo. Anytime you're painting letters or numbers or small uh, things like this, you want to make sure you give it a good coat from every direction. So you see me spraying from different directions so it looks good no matter what direction you're looking at it. Without touching the face. Alright, so the problem now is, you know, we can't touch the background. But I mean, for the most part, you can't. Here we are doing the same thing we did earlier. We're putting the letters and the logos, everything back on. We're just having to be a lot more careful because the paint is uh, not cured very much at all. So we're just wanting to make sure we don't scratch it, that we drop everything in there nice and gentle. And we did a great job on that. We didn't have any issues. Uh, we got everything bolted back on and it looks great. Well, here we go. We've got the Improvement Channel logo on a sign that I can't... I want to thank Richard Day at 42Fab for all of his help on this, for making this happen, letting me come up here to Oklahoma City 
and work with him a day in the shop. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming by. Mm -hmm.